What is adequate growth now? This is where I am going to ask David Laird, if you don't mind, to come up to help me um, explain adequate growth. Um, so, David, can you help me out here? Commissioner, what's your expectation of what we're going to hear this year? I mean, that's that's the hard part, right, is we don't know because essentially we're kind of operating in um, an in what we don't know what's actually happening right now in fourth grade, right? It's happening in different variety, in different level, at different levels in different districts and different campuses. We had some general, um, had some general kind of um, numbers that we threw out as, as David was building this calculation to try to achieve the most generous for students, right? We're going to remain hopeful that many of those kids are going to get through and that each one of the, those foundational skills that maybe they've missed um, are being, um, are being, um, are being addressed. I mean, that's why the supports follow the, the student through the fourth grade. So um, I don't know. And, and I don't know, Christy, if you have some, um, some, L some let ideas. me get you out of this boat that I put well, you in. <laughs> When was parents given that information? Well, I don't formally from the department. I don't think we gave wholesale information about those specific because those are individualized, right? Specifically to that, um, I I don't know. I can't answer that question. It's not like we have a report that says, "Hey, student, you need to meet. You need to. You need 2.6 percent to achieve adequate growth." We haven't created any sort of individual reports at that at that very narrow level. This has been a law since 2021, or right, it was passed, no, it was passed last legislative session, correct? Okay, 2021. Um, most district leaders know of this. Um, with respect to guidance, I think, again, we have been working toward identifying what that adequate growth measure is going to be in order for districts to determine whether or not these students are going to face retention. I have been trying to get information from your department almost week by week from when some of these things out, and it's hard in May, June, July, getting any information from your department that was accurate was next to impossible with me being on the committee coming down every Thursday asking for it. And my parents don't know if their child is on the bubble or not. I almost feel that we're building this plane as we're flying it. I'm all for this accountability and I voted for this, but implementing it has been a problem. I supported this legislation in 2016 because I thought that one through five is was a little um, confusing for parents. Like a one sounds great when actually it was the, the lowest measure of growth. I know the process to get towards this um, calculation, but what are the differences in, in, in weight on this calculation versus how this was originally conceived? Well, I mean, so the actual A through F letter grade wasn't actually really ever conceit per se, but we did have, we do have a, um, you know, the, 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 the federal model, the federal um, accountability model for achievement. It was achievement or um, how districts um, achieve their, their individual targets, which they are called annual measurable objectives. I always have different things, um, a little PTSD from the feds. And then we also calculated growth, acquisition of the English language, chronic absenteeism, and ready, wait, ready grad. I want to make sure that as we communicate this to our students and parents and our teachers and administrators, that they know, like, we're not saying that you are failures. We're saying that there are interventions and potential resources you need and that the department is going to be able to provide those. My child is going to an F school. Like, I want them to know it doesn't mean the school is a failure. It just means that there are things that we have to do to get them to the next step. We do plan on a on a more a public release of our of our dashboard. So because of the timeline and the rush, I mean, we ended up issuing the grades on the 21st of December. Do we have data around achievement? So my understanding is that we do have they have they are required to take um, to administer the TCAP. The results aren't. Um, Anything to write home about is my understanding. Pilot program. It says pilot because we want to see how it works. And we only have a year and a half of data, and we're already talking about expanding the program. So but we also want the students that are taking public dollars to be 
performing either at or higher than uh, the schools, the, the, those students that are in traditional public schools.